trying to get out and see the Croods to a new age. I don't know if I'll be able to, but I revisited the first movie because I rebought it. Uh, I never actually owned it before, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll revisit it anyways, and I'll do a review just in case I don't get out to see the sequel. And don't get me wrong, I will watch the sequel at some point. It may not be now. So uh, how is The Croods? What is The Croods? Uh, the Croods is a DreamWorks animated film. I believe it came out 2013. And um, it was directed by uh, Chris Sanders. And there's another name in here. I'm forgetting. Let's see if it has it here. It doesn't have their names, but basically these two directors worked together and they directed the How to Train Your Dragon series and they directed uh, Lilo and Stitch for Disney and they actually left Disney to go on and create How to Train Your Dragon because they did not like the leadership at Disney and bo all, both of those films are very good at two things. Or they're both good at one thing. <laughs> I want to say for How to Train Dragon, this isn't uh, comedy. I was going to say blending comedy with drama, but How to Train Dragon is not good at that. But let's talk about there. But these stories are about human relationships, and they're really good at doing this. You know, Toothless, Hiccup, Hiccup and his father, and then you have... Um, then you have Lilo and Stitch, which is about a broken family and kind of them coming back together because of Stitch and, you know, and it's the very human stories, uh, relatable stories in a sense. And they're both kind of stories that if you put them on paper, they would not be very interesting. Um, you know, How to Dream Dragon, the first one, is a very boy and your dog type of story where boy and his dog type story which is where a character gets a new dog or an or some kind of supernatural thing kind of et and they have to hide it from people and then people find out and there's this whole it's kind of a generic movie but what makes it good is the execution lilo and stitch is kind of like this too and so the croods has elements of that but what but this movie is not good now, it's not terrible. The animation quality um, is stunning. Uh, the visuals, the backgrounds, the character designs, everything, fantastic. Some of the best animation I think DreamWorks has ever made. I mean, it looks phenomenal. It looks gorgeous. Stunning stuff. But where this movie really falters is in the story and comedy um the comedy here is terrible uh unless you're like i guess i would say five to eight year olds would find this movie f funny even maybe even 12 12 year olds it's very slapstick and very juvenile type humor and i mean this is a kids movie sure but they try to blend it with some dark adult humor, but it's always very jar jar jarring. And like, I get you have to have some humor for kids, but it draw. But a lot of the scenes actually draw away from the emotion of the scenes because of the bad comedy. Because what we have here in this story is Krug, who is now meeting this new character guy. Very uncreative with that name. Like, I think it was supposed to be funny that his name was Guy, but it's not funny. It's really bad. And they're, they meet this guy after their home and their cave is destroyed. And they're kind of on this journey as a family. His daughter, Eep, is falling for this guy. And his whole family is kind of impressed by his new inventions and, and how he's able to help them survive because Greg is feeling more and more useless as this journey goes along. And it's kind of this story about a dad kind of tr trying to protect his family but not realize he's, he's being overprotected, which is 
kind of a generic story, but the way they do it is actually very smart. Like, there's a whole scene, I guess as a spoiler, so skip ahead a couple minutes if you don't want to hear this. Uh, there's a scene where Greg and Guy get stuck in the tar pit, and he talks about how his family got stuck in the tar pit, and, and he was, and he's saying, you know, Guy's like, and Greg's like, you know, my daughter's a lot like you, and he goes, no, your daughter's a lot like you. She loves you. But always forgets to tell you. And he goes, well, yeah, I guess I was always just busy trying to protect my family. And, I, and he's like, well, I guess that's what dads do. This is a really real conversation that I could imagine real people having, you know. Sitting down and having this kind of conversation. That's what How to Train Your Dragon did. You know, when I watch Hiccup or Astrid or uh, have conversations with each other or... Uh, stoic these conversations feel very real and very human and that's what it feels in this movie but then immediately after that there's a scene where they're getting a little um a puppet to get this like saber tooth tiger type thing um over to the tar pits to pull them out and there's this very comedic music so you go from this kind of emotional thing to this quick comedy and it's just Nicolas Cage who voices Greg screaming, and it just does not work. It's terrible. <laughs> and, like, I wouldn't have minded the comedy, but it actually interrupts the movie. And say what you will about How to Train Your Dragon the movie. The comedy is jarring a little bit and not good, but it's never enough to ruin the movies, I think, up until the third one. It kind of ruins parts of the third one. And, yeah, I mean, that is very... It was just bad. And I think that really hurt this movie. Because on the one hand, you have a very good story about family and how that's put together. That I think adults, teenagers could appreciate. Um, you know, I think a lot of adults can relate to Grug, you know, being uh, the type of parent who you're looking at it and you're going, hmm. I don't know about this young new generation coming in, and any, but it's just like it's just played up in the wrong ways, and I think that's what's really annoying about it is the juvenile humor interrupts the tone. It's not very funny. And you have a great score to this movie that really, when I hear it, I kind of feel a little bit emotional in some of the sad parts, and I'm like, cool, I'm starting to feel emotion. Then goofy comedy comes in and breaks that emotion and ruins it and like I get it's a kids movie but they still could have done the comedy maybe made it a little less juvenile and then maybe made it fit the tone of the movie a little bit more right because that would have worked but they didn't do that and so like yeah I mean I can see kids really liking it but it just could have been so much more and more special because how to Train Dragon, you know, is a franchise directed by the same people. It's appreciated by adults and kids everywhere. And I, I don't see that with this movie. A lot of people just forgot it. And I think it's because of the way it was just put together that just made it so forgettable. And also, the repetitive pace of this movie is pretty boring. It's always uh, dangerous animal set piece, dangerous animal set piece, dangerous animal set, pe set piece. And they just run from it for a little bit. So that conflict's defeated and they just keep going until they make it to their home. And I think they could have maybe done a little bit more to fix that kind of pacing in there. Uh, made it feel a little less repetitive in nature. Um, but as it stands, it's a very... It's closer to a 6, but it's a 5 out of 10 movie. Um, I would definitely recommend this movie if you have kids, but... And, but if you if you want to see a good movie by DreamWorks that you can appreciate being an older audience member, How to Train Your Dragon, Shrek 2, Shrek, stuff like that. 